Welcome back to another Teacher Tech tutorial. My name is Emma Balansai and today I'm going to show you how to create an interactive assignment on PowerPoint. I design all of my teacher creations on PowerPoint because to me it's easier to layer, size, and move things around. I have my border and clip art ready here on my desktop. I download all of my clip art fonts or borders from Teacher Pay Teachers. There are tons of free borders and clip art images available. As you see, I have folders to my right specifically for clip art, backgrounds, and borders. Today, I'm going to use a free border from Two Smart Chicks, AG fonts from The Animated Teacher, and clip art from Lidia Barbosa. Just a reminder, most of these artists allow you to use their designs for personal use with your students. And if you're planning on selling, then you have to make sure to follow their guidelines and give them credit. So the first thing you're going to do is open a new PowerPoint presentation. I'm going to erase these boxes that are here by clicking on them and clicking delete. Then I'm going to change the page size by going to file, page setup, and I'm going to make it 11 by 8.5. I tend to use these measurements all the time in case it's something that I want to print out, then this is the paper size. And scale down. Then I'm going to add the clip bar um, border that I want. I want this blue fuzzy dot teal border. And I'm going to rotate it landscape. And make sure you put it in the corner and pull down to the other corner. The next thing I'm going to do is click on insert because I'm going to add some lines. So I'm going to use this line. And I'm going to put a line in the bottom and the top. That way I can divide my title and um, the bottom where all of the clip art, movable clip art will be. So I would drag this line here. I'm going to select black and I want to change the thickness of it. So I'm going to click here on shape outline. I'm going to go down to weight and then you can click the different weight sizes that you want. I'm going to click on three. And I want to repeat this, so I'm just going to copy paste it by clicking. I'm on a Mac, so I'm going to click Command C and then Command V and drag this to the bottom. Next, I'm going to add the title, so I'm going to go to Insert, Shapes, and click on this first one with the A on it. I'm going to drag it all on the top. And I'm going to write the title, which is going to say, sort the nouns. I want to make it look pretty, so I'm going to go to home and center it. I'm going to choose the size and choose a pretty font. Like I said, you can purchase new fonts on TPT. I'm sure there's a lot of free ones. This one's by the Animated Teacher. It's the AG selection. It's called Selective Participation. And you can make it bold. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add a table so that I the, so that the students can sort the, the shapes into person, place, or thing. So I'm going to click on Insert, Table, and I just want it to be three columns. Okay, this is not the way I want it to look. I'm going to drag it down and then I'm going to highlight it and click here on shading and I want it shaded white and I want the borders to only be on the inside. Now, if your screen for PowerPoint doesn't look like this, you can also shade it and right click and click on format shape and on the side you will see the options as well for fill for line and so on the next thing I'm gonna do I'm gonna close this so that I can have more space to design I'm gonna drag it and make sure that it covers all of the middle section of my sort table As you see, when I dragged it right here, it covered the black lines from the bottom and the top. I'm going to show you how you can go ahead and move those lines to the front. So what you're going to do is you're going to click on an area 
and either use two fingers or right click and then you'll see this box you're going to click on reorder objects when you click on reorder objects it will show you all of the things that you have added and in the order that you added them i want to drag these lines towards the front so that they're not hidden behind my table and then you click OK and you see now you can see the lines. That is a very nice way to organize things if you want something behind something else or if you want to bring something forward whenever you're designing. That's one of the biggest reasons why I really like using PowerPoint. Next, I'm going to write the title for each column. So let me make sure the font is black. Person, place, Thing. As you see, you can't see it there because it's in white, so I'm going to change it to black. Then I'm going to center it, and I'm going to change the font to another AG font that I like called AG hashtag nope. And I'll change the size maybe a little bit bigger. There you go. So I'm now done with my background. This is everything that I want the students to not be able to move. Now you can either save it as a picture or you can also take a screenshot. I'm a fan of screenshots, so I'm going to click Command Shift 4 and take the screenshot of this background. As you see, it went here to my desktop and I'm going to open another PowerPoint presentation. And once again, I'm going to erase these um, headings there and change the page size to 11 by 8.5, scale down. And what I want to do here is I want to put that picture here, but I don't want the students to be able to move it. For example, if I just drag it here, the students are going to be able to move it. It might get moved around and they're going to let you know. Um, I don't know what happened. It's moving everywhere when I try to move the pieces to sort. So what you're going to do is you're going to put it as a background. The way you do that is click on um, right click and you're going to go down to format background. Once again, you're going to right click or use the two fingers depending on how you use your cursor or your laptop and click on format background then i'm going to click on picture or texture fill and you're going to insert the source here i have the screenshot of that background i took and there you go it appears there and if you see if i try and drag it and move it around and push it or type on it it will not move. It's a permanent background and the students would not be able to remove that. Now what I'm going to do is add the movable pieces. Now this is very important. Um, like I said, the clipboard artist would really want for you to protect their work and not share it in a way that other people can take advantage and steal it, etc. So you have to make sure that you click on their terms of use and make sure that they allow you to um, use it as movable pieces. This artist, Lidia Barbosa, does allow this clip art to be used for movable, um, and she says it in her terms of use. So here are the things that I selected that I'm gonna use from her collection. I'm gonna have this astronaut, and I'm gonna drag them down here to where they fit on the bottom. And this collection of clip art I actually purchased for um, some beginning syllable sounds in Spanish. And this is her mega collection for syllable sounds in Spanish. But I love all her clip art. It's super cute. And you see the more that you design and the more things you do, you tend to like want more in a different variety of clip art. So I, I do end up purchasing quite a bit. Okay, so these are all the pieces that the students are going to be able to move around and sort for
for a person, place, or thing. And as you see, I'm not going to be able to fit it. So I'm going to make all of them a little smaller. I click on shift and I click on every single one by clicking shift at the same time. And if I drag one, it drags all of them. That way they're all smaller and I can scoot them over. And those little quick um, keyboard options like the one I just did, um, really help you design a lot faster. Okay, so here we go. So this is the interactive activity that I have for my students. And the students would not be able to move anything else except for these movable clip art pieces. And what they would do is sort them by person, place, thing. And then turn this into you. Um, through Schoology, or if you decide to upload this to Google Slides, there's a lot of ways that you can um, assign it to your students. So I'm going to show you how I use it for Schoology um, really quick. So make sure that you save it. I usually save the one that is movable as template and the one that is meant for the students. Um, I write, I don't write the word template on it. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to upload that activity into my OneDrive. Um, I did name it Noun Sort Activity, so I'm going to go to Upload, Files, and I'm going to click on Noun Sort Activity, Open, and you'll see that it will download to your OneDrive. Here you can see uploading one item. Okay, so I uploaded it to my OneDrive. As you see, it's here. Um, right now it says private. You wanna make it shareable. So click on those three dots and click on manage access. That way you can share it with anyone in your district. Click share and I wanna put anyone in my district and you wanna select if they can edit or not and then apply. Then you're going to go to your Schoology course and you're going to click on add materials and then create an assignment. You can go ahead and type out the title, noun, sort, activity, or whatever activity you design for your class. And here, since I already uploaded it to my OneDrive, when I click on OneDrive assignments, I will see everything that I have uploaded there. And this is where I'm going to choose that activity to share with my students. Here, when I scroll down, I see noun sort activity. I'm going to attach it. And when I click on attach, it'll show me here. This will create a copy of your file for each student. That means every student will get their own copy. So go ahead and fill out the rest of the description. And if you want to publish or not, and if you want to individually assign or assign for the whole class, and create your assignment. And if you want to see all the procedure on how to upload the assignments, um, you can also watch my other video called Creating Assignments for Schoology. Um, I'll link it down below. That way you can see it in a lot more detail, but that's about it. So this is how you would share an interactive activity with your class so that they can go ahead and sort things. And especially for younger students, this is a lot more user friendly um, and a lot more engaging for them. Thank you so much for watching this tutorial. I hope I was able to help you get started with creating interactive activities for your students. If there's anything else you would like for me to do a tutorial on, make sure to comment below and you can also find my designs and teacher resources at Teachers Pay Teachers. My name is Emma Balanza and my TPT store is called Amazing Teacher. I look forward to seeing what you create and I'm sure your students will love to see your colorful creations.